I was used to that pattern. So I timed. And exactly at that moment, the guy started behaving funny, just like the rest that I had had in my life before. I was like, wow, Rainy. I now had shortened his name from Reinhold to Rainy because I had called him Reinhold after German theology and I studied him in campus. I would tell Rainy, please breastfeed. Rainy, please breastfeed. But he wouldn't tell God, please make him to breastfeed. So that was the last time he I saw him alive. Let's just say I was tired and I slept for a very, very long time. I must have been really tired that night because I slept for over two and a half hours and when I woke up I was like, and, and he has slept soundly. So I looked at the time and I was like, oh yeah, it's 6.30. So I was thinking, ah, let me try and breastfeed him. So when I woke up and then I realized what, he was not moving, he was not breathing. I really, really, really got scared and I, I remember cutting him and they say, no, 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 God, no, no. And then I ran out of my bedroom. I started run, running around the dining room and I remember they now got scared like what is happening what is happening I was like the baby is not breathing the baby is not breathing so I ran I really ran and uh and they took us to hospital again where I had given birth and the doctor checked the child it, it, there was no choking there was it's like he slept and didn't wake up and then that's when I became familiar that there is a condition known as SIDS sudden infant death syndrome that it happens to kids who are newborn and under a certain age and I remember it was a new world for me remember I have gone through everything from when I was four years but this one broke me completely this was my rock bottom this is what really really hurt me more than anything and I cried I used to cry I used to blame myself why didn't I listen to my instincts when I was feeling restless? Did I do anything wrong? Although the nurses, when I told them that, they tried to comfort me and told me that sometimes these things happen. I'm not the first one. They've seen so many mothers losing their kids that way. And I remember I cried, I cried. And then at that moment, when after the funeral, I remember seeing a very tiny coffin. I've never seen such a small coffin in my life. And after the funeral, everybody that I met, that is when God started pursuing me and everybody that I met told me you need to look for God you need to look for God you need to look for God you need to search for God you need to search for God and at that moment I realized I need to go back to God so the prodigal daughter at that moment is when she started now looking for God and I would cry I would cry and cry and cry and tell God I'm sorry for everything I have done I'm sorry I went away from your presence and all that and I cried and at that moment I started finding my Haley. And then I remember at this specific moment, I never forget it, I was in the kitchen and I was cooking up something in the cooker. And God spoke to me. And uh, God told me, I understand your pain. Because I was watching this video on my phone and it was playing. And I didn't know it was the crucifixion of Jesus until all of, her, all of a sudden I saw that it was the crucifixion of Jesus and I cried. I cried. I, God told me I can feel your pain. I feel how you're feeling. I had to watch my son die on the cross and I cried. I really shed tears at that moment because I felt the pain of the father when Jesus was mocked. When Jesus received the stripes on his back, it was a supernatural encounter for me. And I, even the moment when Jesus turned away and said, Eloi, Eloi, Samakitani, at that moment where he was saying, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? I felt the Father when he, it was too much for him. He turned away, he could not see the suffering on his son again. And I cried. I told God, I'm sorry. At least Reinhold passed on peacefully. Jesus died a very painful death and you had to watch it all. And I cried, and that's when my healing began. You remember just Dave, the ones that I mentioned I met in high school? I was invited to their home. They had just gotten a kid, and I was feeling like I don't want to go. I don't want to see a newborn. I don't want to see a young child. 
but God really convicted me that I needed to go and God really told me that I needed to go and I went and they really embraced me after I told them what I had gone through they really comforted me they told me of other stories of also other parents who lost their kids and it really encouraged me and I remember that night it was on a Saturday May 26 2018 and when I went home that is the night that I gave my life to Christ of course the devil tried to kill me because there were there were no lights and there was a candle on and I had finished cooking and I had just turned the gas off and then one and a half hours later is when I went back to the kitchen only to find the knob on and the can- candle was still on and I remember I was shaking I was shaking I was so scared I called my aunt who happened to have prayed for me after I lost my son and I got delivered from all those sexual addiction issues I had. I just woke up one morning and I was like, they are gone, the memories are gone. You know, th- that door had been closed in my life and I was so excited. I encouraged myself in the Lord and I did not let me, I did not let fear to define me. So I gave my life to Christ and despite everything and I remember at the moment I just said the sinner's prayer I felt peace and I started crying I started telling God to deliver me from every altar that was fighting me and from that moment on I got connected to a Bible study fellowship group and I started growing spiritually I got baptized to the gifts of the I got baptized with the Holy Spirit and after that God started unfolding in my life what had happened, how, what the enemy had done, why I was getting rejection in the area of marriage. I had been tied in terms of marriage by some evil, wicked people or what I like to call them are vessels of the enemy. They were used by the enemy to try and tie me. They tried to sell me to the Marine Kingdom and all that just for souls. You know, people do anything. People just know of thieves who are physical, but there are those who steal spiritual things from people. They steal spiritual gifts, they cut destinies, they sell souls. Yeah, they start other aspects of the spiritual realm. And God exposed everything to me in a dream. Even what happened to my son, how he was killed, because I saw him in one of the dreams that I had had. And God started delivering me. And then I remember at my lowest point, I asked God, my son died and I'm here. Why? Why am I still alive? And God directed me to a book known as Purpose Driven Life by Requirement. So God brought everything to light that had happened in my life. So these things do happen. There are people who use divination. There are people who use witchcraft. There are all these people that used to try and tie your destiny. They are just vessels of the enemy. But I forgave everyone who was involved. I I don't carry anybody inside my heart because God has really worked on me. He's continually doing a good work within me. And with that, my testimony comes to an end. And right now, I have been in two years in salvation, two years out of sexual addiction, living a pure life you know, abstaining and everything. And these things that I used to struggle with, I don't struggle with abstaining nowadays because whatever spirit that was behind, God took it away from my life. So I'm here to encourage you. Anyone watching my testimony, you have gone through what I've gone through and you're feeling your muzzled up. You feel like you have a voice, but you cannot talk. God is there and he listens and he will deliver you. But you need to open up. Look for an accountability partner. I would have corrected this problem in high school if I would have just opened up. But I decided to muzzle up. That's why I'm not keeping quiet. I'm going to share my story. So if you're there and you want to get right with God. Some of you backslid because of the enemy lying to you. Some of you have never given your life to Christ, but you have all these struggles in your life. This is the time. And I'm going to say the the repentance prayer. And if you're there, please repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before your presence. I confess that I'm a sinner and in need of your help. I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. I ask that you forgive me of all of my sins. In the name of Jesus, may God baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire in the name of Jesus. And if you're out there and you're feeling ashamed of your struggle, I'm praying for you right now that God will deliver you from every altar that has been fighting you since you were a kid. Every door that the devil opened in your life, I command it to be closed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I speak deliverance in your life may you be delivered from everything that the devil has put to stop you from achieving your destiny here on earth be set free and if you have any questions if you have any comments please 
just go to the message section and just message me if you have any confessions that you need to make please just message me don't let the enemy muzzle you with shame you have a voice speak up and speak out and god will send people to help you and if you want to read about my testimony i have a blog by the name my jesus is amazing i will link in the bio on the comment section again once more my name is nashipai aka nash and i am born again and i am here to tell you that jesus loves you bye bye